How about, okay, let's talk about line number two. Uh, this one is um, follow your heart. Um, explain, like, what is it, what is the thing that the kids are believing and then how does this affect them and then how do you work them th out of that? Yes. Well, I mean, most media that they're going to be consuming, you know, like whether it's here on YouTube or whether it's actually on a show that's being streamed somewhere, like everything is going to tell them, you know, follow your heart, be the true you, be the authentic you, you know, just like yeah. the phrase that we hear all the time, like you do you, you know, you do you. So our kids are, are constantly going to hear this lie that their heart is the most reliable guide for truth, you know, meaning again, that morality is subjective, you know, like you will find the answer within. I was just last week, I was at Disney World with my whole family and, you know, with my little nephews and niece and like everywhere there's like, I love it there. Like there's this magical music, but then all these lies are just coming. It's like, you're like, if you have a dream, you know, like just chase after it with all you have, you know, like, yeah. or you have the power within you. And our kids just hear this all the time. You know, even if they don't say those things out loud, they're absorbing this. But the reason I uh, wanted to address this lie second, you know, as opposed to first, is if we actually first cover the difference between objective truths or objective claims that are either true or false, mm -hmm. and then subjective preferences, then our kids will be able to see through this lie because they're going to hear it everywhere. You know, just you do you, you follow your heart. Um, but I saw this really quickly with my students that I was teaching third grade at the time and I had taught them the difference between objective claims and subjective claims. And then we started looking at, okay, let's look at some different ways that people view the world. Let's look at different beliefs that people have about morality. And we looked at this idea of, you know, like follow your heart and this one kid in, in my class, he raises his hand right away and he's like, um, excuse me, Mr. Banner, I'm like super confused. And I was like, what are you confused about, Josh? And he was like, okay, so let's say my heart tells me that I need this new video game. And then my dad, his heart tells him I don't need that new video game. And I was like, oh, so are you saying that your heart is going to sometimes tell you something different than somebody else's heart? He's like, yeah, that's like a subjective thing. And I was like, Oh, that's interesting. So then what's going to happen? And so we just had a great discussion, you know, about how our hearts, you know, like are going to constantly be in conflict that, you know, like you can't practically, nobody really lives this way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they Amen might live following that. their own hearts, but not everybody else. Right. Um, so I just found that we need to help our kids see that our hearts are continually steering us in the wrong direction, that we have these subjective whims. And one great way to do this is just to directly address this, just directly address it and, and ask our kids, you know, should we follow our hearts? Like, should you just do you? What do you think about it? And have this discussion and ask them just so that we can first gauge, you know, like, where are they? How, you know, have they absorbed this lie from culture? How deeply ingrained is it? And then to really just give, start giving some hypothetical situations, or it could even be personal examples. Like, I mean, I don't know about you, but if I followed all of the whims of my heart this week, I probably wouldn't be doing this live stream because I'd probably be in jail right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like there's so many things that like I in the moment, like when I get frustrated or angry that I want to do that would, you know, like are just clearly not the right thing to do. And kids are able to see this so quickly. Like a lot of times I'll just ask a kid like, okay, what are some of the things your heart has told you to do today? Or, you know, like when you've been playing with your siblings, what sometimes what does your heart want to do? push them, kick them, you know, like yeah. call them a mean name um, so that they can just see the logical outworking of this, that our hearts are not reliable guides to truth. You know, like we know in Jeremiah 17 that, you know, God directly tells us this, that our hearts are desperately wicked, mm -hmm. you know, and, and right before that, Pat, that verse, you know, like God has outlined, you know, like that when we trust in ourselves, when we trust in man, you know, we're, you know, like we're like a dried up tree, you know, as opposed to following him who is the, who is the creator of objective reality. Um, mm -hmm. So this is another really important one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's like, the, I think of the, it's the reversal of Proverbs 3, where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm -hmm. This is, this is trusting in your heart. And then you're sort of trusting th um, the Lord with your heart, like as if my heart is going to even tell me what God wants and who God is. It's all going to come from my heart, like all my, my purpose and commitments and decisions are going to flow from my heart, which is my desires. But the biblical bad news <laughs> It's good news when you realize it's true. It's like, oh, good, I'm glad I was warned. 
is yeah, that the heart is <laughs> the heart is like a landmine of dangerous you know places and things. And some of the desires are good, and some of the desires are bad. And it's yeah. and I, I'm amazed, Elizabeth. I, I'm I'm sure you are too. I'm sure anybody who's honest with themselves is amazed at how quickly and and easily we can justify wicked behavior oh, just yeah. because we want to do it. It's like my imagination goes into overdrive to make it okay to. I remember when I was a kid. This lame story, but. My mom says, be home by the time the streetlights come on, right? That was the rule for uh, for this season of life. I was 23, so I had to be home. <laughs> um, I, was, no, I was just a little kid. But um, when I was playing, I noticed the streetlights coming on, and I was trying to weigh in my head how much I wanted to not get in trouble versus how much I wanted to keep playing. And I noticed the streetlight directly in front of my house was not on. Now, I knew it was just broken, right? But I was like, <laughs> technically... <laughs> <laughs> the street light in closest proximity to my own home is not on. And she said, the street light's coming. So I'll, I'm going to keep playing, right? And I got home so late. And then when I, and, and this was the this was the real bad thing, right? Was I told my mom this. I was like, yeah, well, the street light in front of our house didn't turn on. And she was like, okay. And she just accepted it. <laughs> I probably, oh, wow. I should have got a spanking out there. So definitely. <laughs> um, I totally got away with it. I got away with a lot. But um but yeah, the, the danger is like, I'm so good at lying to myself. Like every divorce I've ever seen is a result of someone following their heart. Every yeah. time someone has abandoned some really noble and good task they were doing, they're following their heart. Like it's, our hearts are just really dangerous things. So um, follow your heart. When you deal with kids, before we move on, tell people a little bit about your experience. Like you, you have a, a program that, that I, I think people should seriously consider. If you have kids, that fit, what are the ages for the program from the bottom to top? Because I know you're adding more as yeah. you go here. Yep, right now we have materials for ages four through 14. Four through 14. And if, so if you guys have kids four through 14, please consider it. Go on their website, foundationworldview.com. I'm, I'm not making a penny from this. Like I'm not getting kickbacks for each person who signs up. Like I just purely want you guys to be able to teach your kids. It's not easy. It's not easy as parents even to know how to walk them through this. And Elizabeth, tell us a little bit about your story, like how you got started because this, this whole thing kind of happened organically, right? Yeah, very much so. I did not see my life heading in this direction like seven years ago. Um, so I was teaching fourth grade and then third grade in a Christian school. And the students that were in the school, they came from these great Christian homes. Um, you know, I'm passionate about God's word. I'm passionate about discipleship. So I knew that they were getting a biblically based education all day long. For me, most of them were fairly involved in the churches that they were attending. And several years into my teaching experience, I just noticed my students rapidly absorbing ideas Ideas from the culture without any question. Just like one humorous story is one day I was teaching, was using a projector. The projector went on the fritz. I was trying to fiddle around with the wires and I was like, okay, guys, do this. I gave them an assignment, fiddling around with the wires. And one of the students goes, man, this is like really stressful, guys. We should totally meditate to stay calm. You know, like <laughs> kind of funny. So mm -hmm. I like stop fiddling with the wires and I turn around and like half my class is on the floor with their legs crossed and their arms out and they're going like, mm. oh, and I was dear. like, wow. whoa, like time out. Like, okay, everybody back in their seats. We need to talk about this. Like when we talk about the word meditation, like what you were just doing is not what scripture describes. Like you were trying to empty your minds. This comes from like, you know, Eastern religions and like just mm -hmm. like blank stares on their faces. And I saw so many different examples like this where I was like, okay, what, like, what am I doing wrong? What you know, how can I get my kids to think? So I started studying. I started taking a few online classes, doing a lot of reading. At the time, I had no idea what apologetics was, but I started diving into apologetics and worldview. And I was like, okay, this is what my students are missing. They can't critically think through everything they're being encounter they're encountering. Right. So they need these skills. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'm going to teach an after school class on this. So I got permission to teach an after school class, and I went and I looked for materials. And I couldn't find anything like at the third, fourth and fifth grade level. And I was like, surely somebody has to be doing something out there. And there was like a few things, but none of them were designed in a way that was actually going to transform the way that kids thought. They weren't right. actually designed from a way that aligned with the way God designed the human mind to learn with sound educational philosophy. So I was like, well, I guess I can start creating some stuff. So I started creating things, ran it by like a friend of mine who had a degree in philosophy and theology just to make sure I was like translating it faithfully. And the students were like completely 
transformed. Like moms were calling me and were like, um, excuse me, my son wants to pause family movie night and evaluate the character's worldview. And this is great, but I don't know how to do it. So can you help me? Um, and then other teachers were coming down to my classroom and they were like, okay, your students are thinking like more deeply about literature and science and mathematics and history than I ever have. Like, yeah. what are you doing? And I was like, I kind of don't know. <laughs> like, I'm just giving them these skills right. and they're you know, like, we're not talking about like mm -hmm. science or math or history in this class. And so that was, you know, it was just so exciting to see the students at my school transformed. And that's when people started hearing what was going on. They were noticing the change in these students. They're like, oh, great. How can we get our hands on this? And I was like, I'm not a publishing house. I'm a third grade teacher. Like, sorry. <laughs> um, but eventually, after getting several years of those requests, I started praying through this. And I went back to school, got a master's degree in Christian apologetics from Biola, and then eventually stepped outside of the classroom to create resources so that others can just take these resources and implement them with the kids in their life because i know you know most people don't have time to go back to school and you know get a master's in apologetics so love being able to do this and i just love the journey <laughs> that oh, god has I, I brought think about. it's so valuable i'm glad you're doing it, it, it the reason why i wanted you to tell your stories because i want people to know like this happened organically there's a okay this is the same as my own youtube content right like this is just me saying i think there's a need and i think that mm -hmm. i can try to help fill that need and then just watching what God does through it, you know, and and what I want to do is not just tell people what to think. Here's the Christian theology you should believe in, but how to think, right? Like walking right. people through how to think biblically, so that no matter what you encounter, you can you can assess it and consider it and then process it through a biblical worldview. And you're doing this for for kids, respect for young people, but also for their parents. And that's right. what I love about this curriculum. That's why I want to recommend people do it. Can we tell them about the the coupon code you mentioned earlier? Or is yes, that if, yeah, yep, no, that's okay. great. So if you're interested in purchasing one of our curriculums to use in your home, if you just use the coupon code BibleThinker, uh, we'd be love to give you 10% off any license that you purchase. There you go. Just just use the coupon code, right? <laughs> <Bible>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and again, I'm not making anything off nothing. There's no Sorry. payment or exchange of anything, oh, it, <laughs> which is which is fine. God's totally taking care of me, so I'm, I'm good. But <laughs> Um, I just wanted you guys to know there's no motive there except to help you minister to your kids.